I'm going to speak about open simulation uh, for public health in Africa. Uh, so um, my main area is modeling and simulation. And uh, when I'm saying modeling and simulation, I mean process simulation and agent-based simulation, or the combination of the two, and uh, that running in one model or maybe a, a distributed simulation. And again, another clarification, because by distributed simulation, it's not distributing the load uh, to run in a parallel uh, for one model, but it is having different models that they are individual and independent, but they can communicate in real time and interoperate uh, using standards, of course. Uh, so today I'm going to speak briefly about three examples that we developed uh, for in, a context, in an African context and uh, they are all open simulations. Uh, it is uh, the infectious disease simulation that Simon spoke earlier. It is another model, uh, agent-based simulation of physical activity interventions. And uh, the HIV testing clinics, which is a discrete event simulation, and you have the leaflet in your bags. Before uh, going into the models, just to tell you about our group, we are the modeling and simulation group at Brunel University, and we are doing different uh, simulation, we are using simulation in different contexts, in, in, in industry, in healthcare, uh, different simulation techniques, and we work with commercial companies and with uh, uh, researchers and institutions. Uh, the other thing is that we work with open science software that simulations are completely open. We work with commercial packages which can be shared and we work with very closed packages uh, because the data is classified. And another important thing is that we include students to our simulations. We believe in research-led uh, led education, so we have undergraduate students that they are doing projects and they have support from uh, PhD candidates and more experienced researchers. And we all learn from each other. It is a really very nice experience. So, uh, infectious uh, disease simulation, there has been done a lot of work, of work on that. This is an example of the Ebola uh, spread, which was uh, uh, quite a, a big issue a couple of years ago in West Africa. And this visualization is how the, how the Ebola spread through airport nodes uh, starting from West Africa. Behind this visualization is actually an agent-based simulation model. And of course, we can analyze the data and we can see where the hubs are. And uh, France was the main hub for spreading the disease in Europe because of the, uh, uh, of the connection uh, with uh, West Africa. Now, the simulation that we use for uh, the science gateway that we created to demonstrate the, con uh, the, the concept, and it is not a real model, <laughs> uh, it is developed in Repast. Uh, and uh, Adedeji Fabigi is a PhD candidate at Brunel University. He created the Science Gateway. He is one of our champions. And uh, the model behind the Science Gateway is what we see here. It is, uh, this is the visualization of Repast, and we see the network of infections, uh, of infection networks between, uh, in, inside the population. We can change the dynamic of the population in our uh, parameters, and test different strategies. But of course, this data is all uh, made up. <laughs> and uh, what we did, uh, essentially, the story is that we were discussing with Simon, okay, we need to prove uh, the concept that uh, having a simulation on a science gateway, what we can do, uh, building a model, it takes time, it takes time to collect data, it takes really a uh, big effort. So quickly, uh, quick and fast, how can we build a model that it is an infectious uh, disease simulation, but not quite uh, the, the thing. And uh, what is happening here, we have three types of agents. Uh, it is the susceptible, susceptible population, the infected population, and the recovered population after infections. Uh, the susceptible can become infected when they get in touch with uh, an infected agent. Uh, the recovered population, they have immunity, which is decreased slowly uh, with the passage of time and when they get in contact with uh, infected people. Uh, 
uh, and uh, again they can become susceptible, uh, susceptible and then uh, become infected again. And we do it annually because we wanted to simulate an annual outbreak of a, a disease of an annual outbreak, like influenza, for example. Uh, the graph looks quite realistic, which is scary in terms of uh, we made up everything. So we have the dynamics of the infected uh, and uh, susceptible population at the end. And uh, this is uh, uh, in, on the Science Gateway, as Simon explained earlier, there are the artifacts that we have to share. And uh, we have the simulations, which is the software and the libraries that it, uh, the, the model runs. We have the model, which is actually the logic of our simulation. We have data, we have results, and of course the computing resources where this simulation is going to run on. It can be cloud or grid uh, or any processor. And uh, we want to access it openly, and uh, so we want to store all these artifacts, and we want to access them by, uh, to identify them and access them, and then to connect them with the researchers that they have done the research. And uh, uh, this, you have seen that earlier, so I'm going through quickly. Uh, this is a paper, and all the artifacts, that there are links, and then the packaged link that you can have the whole packet, packet there. Uh, so, what we are doing, we submit these artifacts on the open access repository. Once we submit the artifacts, we get the OIs, uh, so we can identify its item. And in the science gateway, this application is on the African grid gateway, and uh, we can access it through the healthcare application link here, and we go to the interface of the specific application. The same uh, parameters as we have in the desktop uh, application, we have, them, we have the same parameter fields in the uh, Science Gateway, so we can just change uh, input uh, parameters and run different experiments. At the end, when we run experiments, we can access results from my jobs and download the results, analyze them, or upload them and visualize them on the Science Gateway itself. This is for demonstration purposes, and uh, again, I emphasize it is not a real model. And then again, with ORCID ID, we can link all these uh, artifacts with a researcher that, uh, or, uh, that created this uh, research. Another model, and this is uh, the real thing, <laughs> it is uh, we developed an agent-based simulation funded by the Depart uh, Department of Health in the UK. Uh, this is the conceptual model, and uh, we wanted to have uh, individual uh, micro simulation in order to study cost effectiveness of physical activity interventions. So, what is happening here? We have a cohort, a real population from the UK, from the survey, health survey from England. Uh, so, we have all the medical history, their characteristics like uh, BMI, cholesterol age uh, and the physical, physical activity data, it is collected from literature and it was a challenge because it is not well, um, well reported yet and the measurement, uh, it was a challenge as well, how we measure physical, physical activity. So what is happening here, uh, every individual in every time unit of the simulation uh, is uh, going through some activities. Uh, we calculate the risk of uh, cardiovascular disease uh, using well-established uh, algorithms like Q-Risk. And then, according uh, to, uh, we take into account the relative risk according to their physical activity level and we adjust this risk. Uh, so, uh, we, calculate, we, we check then if they are going to have an event and uh, uh, we introduce intervention. Int by introducing intervention, we expect to increase the physical activity of the individual. And this, in turn, we expect to uh, decrease the risk for a disease. And by doing this, uh, we have uh, less cost uh, in the healthcare service because each of uh, the events are quite expensive, especially stroke. Uh, they have, apart from the, uh, all, apart from the impact on the quality of life, they have impact on uh, the cost as well in the system. And uh, the thing is now that uh, every 
uh, we have different sectors that they introduce uh, physical activity interventions. It can be the healthcare sector, it can be the educational sector, or maybe the transport sector built by building uh, cycle lanes. Uh, in schools, they introduce interventions for kids. And so we want to see if it is cost effective to introduce an intervention in the smaller age, in the younger age, or older age, or, and how this will affect the population. So we built uh, a, an agent-based simulation uh, that we have different parameters and we can filter our population to select the cohort according to what uh, study we want to, uh, to, to what do we want to study in the specific scenario. So we can select the population between 2030 and see if how, the, if how they will behave uh, up to the end of the life. Uh, we have uh, developed the model in, with accessibility in mind because we want later to include behavioral modeling and mobility, physical activity. It is uh, affected by the social interaction. At the moment, it is not implemented yet. And so we, for visualization, we just decided to use the traffic light uh, system to see if uh, uh, people are active or not active or um, moderately active. Uh, so this model, uh, we had just developed and validating this model now. Uh, the uh, artifacts are depositing in the open access uh, data repository and uh, we are in the process of creating a science gateway uh, for this model. Uh, what we want to do is to share this uh, model with uh, health economists in Ghana so they can use it in their codex. However, uh, there, is, there are challenges there because uh, we have data specific for population in England. Can we apply this in another context? Uh, what need to be modified? So these are all challenges uh, that we need to address. And again, uh, for this model now, we don't speak about reproducibility of the results, so validating the experiment, but reusability of simulations. Uh, and uh, we need to take into account the, the context that the experiment is, uh, is going to, uh, to run as well. Uh, another uh, example is the Shout It Now demonstration simulation, and you have it in your leaflet. This is built in a commercial uh, simulation software, the Simulate. This is a discrete event simulation. Uh, so we have activities and queues. It is actually a queuing network. What they wanted to do, uh, Shout It Now it is a charity organization. They have uh, HIV testing clinics in uh, Western Cape and they wanted to increase the number of people that uh, they educate and they go and are tested for HIV. However, they need resources. Uh, they need volunteers, they need computers, so they educate people. And they wanted to do it as efficiently as possible because, of course, uh, it is a charity and we, we want to do it as efficiently as possible. And uh, so they conducted a simulate through a university and they created a model of their process. And they managed to, uh, to, uh, to, they managed to increase the number of people that they tested with less resources. Behind the visualization, it is the model. Simulate interface is something like that. It is a commercial package and it is easier to create a model than the previous example because it is drag and drop uh, components. Uh, they have uh, properties uh, with, uh, that they can be modified quite easily. If you want to go into more detail and build a more sophisticated model, they, they provide a, a programming language as well so we can, we can create more sophisticated models. But uh, very easily we can create simple models with Simulate. So this is the simulating their interface and uh, it can be accessed in this link, it is in your leaflet as well. And when you uh, register and you access the link, you see this uh, visualization, which is a 3D visualization of the clinic. Uh, you can uh, test it, so you can, you can put uh, different uh, resources and uh, while you do your experiments, you can uh, take the results as well. So you can have a play with a simulation uh, on uh, here. And uh, this is, well, we, we are in simulation. We are excited of this because this is a commercial package and it is open to everybody. So it, it is a good step in open, uh, open simulation. 
And uh, yeah, this is the big picture of big simulations. So I said that uh, we, want, we, we work on distributed simulations. We have different models that they interoperate. Uh, we need resources to run simulations. Simulations are um, stochastic experimentation, so we need many replications to have accuracy of results. So we, we need quite a lot of computational uh, power there. And uh, what is the big picture? So we have many agents of, uh, let, let's take an example of supply chain in industry. We have many agents and suppliers, individual suppliers. Uh, yes, down here. So we have many individual suppliers and they are individual entities, uh, agents in a, a, one agent based simulation or maybe different models. And this can feed uh, data to a process simulation, which is our, uh, our uh, manufacturing uh, facility, which again, it can be one model or maybe different models that interoperate. And this again, we have uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, consumers at the end of the supply chain that again, they can be uh, modeled as individual entities, as agents. So now all these models, they, all this process, it can be embedded in a workflow. And uh, this is an example of a workflow in another science gateway framework that we, were, we, we worked uh, with, uh, WSP grade GUs. So we have uh, one uh, activity, we have, uh, this, and this activity produces something, a file that leads uh, to uh, the next activity. And so we can run this in parallel on cloud resources and uh, then collect using workflows again, either Kepler in the open uh, science uh, platform or the, the other technology, WSP grade that we used here. So we create a generator, a parameter sweep, so we run parallel different, many simulations and then we collect the result. And of course, we can use then data analysis uh, and uh, analytics tools that we can visualize and analyze our uh, our uh, simulations. So yeah, this is we are not there yet. We have some components, but not all of it. But this is the, the real uh, vision. And uh, yes, this was uh, my presentation. Thank you very much. And uh, this is the last one, <laughs> I promise.